Welcome back to our class. We are now in our second quarter, week one. Today, we are going to discuss about earthquakes and faults. Our most essential learning competency for this week is using models or illustrations explain how movements along faults generate earthquakes. Our lesson objectives are, number one, describe what fault is and how these faults related to earthquakes. Number two, identify different types of faults. Are you ready? Let us answer the following question with true or false. Number one, Philippines is located along the Pacific Ring of Fire. What is your answer? Amazing! The Ring of Fire, also known as the Pacific Ring of Fire, the Rim of Fire, the Girdle of Fire, or the Circum Pacific Belt is a region around much of the rim of the Pacific Ocean, where many volcanic eruptions and earthquakes occur. Some of the countries at the Pacific Ring of Fire are Japan, Indonesia, and Philippines. Number 2. Earthquakes are not associated with faults. What is your answer? The answer is false because earthquakes are associated with faults. And let us discuss this later. Number three, a fault is a break in the Earth's crust, and along the break, no movement has taken place. What is your answer? The answer is false. It is true because there is movement along the fault. And let us discuss that later in our lesson. What is an earthquake? An earthquake is caused by a sudden slip on fault. The tectonic plates are always slowly moving, but they get stuck at their edge due to friction. When the stress on the edge overcomes the friction, there is an earthquake that releases in the form of energy in waves that travel through the Earth's interior and crust that cause the shaking that we feel. Have you experienced an earthquake? How about fault? What is fault? Activity time! Procedure Number one, spread the newspaper on, table, on a table. Do the activity on the newspaper. Arrange the two sheets of cardboard edge to edge like in the figure one. Number three, Pour sand along the boundary of the two sheet, like in figure 2. With the ruler, flatten the top of the sand and make two parallel lines. And number 5, now move the sheets slowly in the direction shown in figure 3. If you did the experiment correct, these are the illustrations. Let us answer the question below. 
as you move the sheet, what is formed in the sand? A crack, line, or break is formed in the sand. Number two, what happens to the lines? The answer is, the lines are shifted or displaced. So what is fold? Folds may range in length or fold is a fracture or zone of fractures between two blocks of rocks. Folds allow the blocks to move relative to each other. This movement may occur rapidly in the form of an earthquake or may occur slowly in the form of creep. Folds may range in length from a few millimeters to thousands of kilometers. Most folds produce repeated displacements over geological times. In the image below, can you point out where the fault is? You're right! How do faults produce quakes? Energy from Earth's interior makes the ground move. Friction holds the rock together. Once the friction is overcome, the ground will move and the earthquake will occur. Earthquakes are caused when fault is lit suddenly. Friction between the two sides of a fault keeps it from moving until the stress on the fault overcomes the friction. Then the fault is lifts and cre creates an earthquake. Types of faults Faults are classified according to the movement of two blocks. There are three types of faults, namely normal fault, reverse fault, and strike slip fault. Normal fault A deeply slip fault in which the block above the fault has moved downward relative to the block below. This type of faulting occurs in response to extension. Occurs when the hanging wall moves down relative to the foot wall. Reverse fault, a deep slip fault in which the upper block above the fault plane moves up and over the lower block. This type of faulting is common in areas of compression. When, a, when the deep angle is shallow, a reverse fault is often described as a thrust fault. Occurs where the hanging wall moves up or is thrust over the foot wall. Strike slip fault. A fault on which the two blocks side pass one another. The San Andres fault is an example of a right lateral fault. We have two types of strike slip fault the left lateral and the right lateral. If you were to stand on the fault and look along its length, this is a type of strike slip fault where the left block moves toward you and the right block moves away. If you were to stand on the fold and look along its length, this is a type of strip slip fold where the right block moves toward you and the left block moves away. Now let us discuss the different types of stresses in the Earth's crust. Number one is compression. Compression pushes rock together. 
Compression is a type of stress that causes the rock to push or squeeze against one another. It targets the center of the rock and can cause either horizontal or vertical orientation. In horizontal compression, stress, the crust can thicken or shorten. In vertical compression stress, the crust can thin out and break, out, break off. The force of compression can push rocks together or cause the edge of each plate colliding to rise. Mountains are the result of high-impact compression stress caused when two plates collided. Number two is tension. Compression forces the rocks and crust to collide and move together. Tension forces the rocks to pull apart. Tension can happen in two ways. Two separate plates can move further away from each other, or the ends of one plate can move in different directions. Some scientists think tension stress caused the ancient massive continent Pangea to break off into the seven continents we have today. Next is shear or shearing. When shear stress occurs, the force of the stress pushes some of the crust in different directions. When this happens, a large part of the crust can break off, which makes the plate size smaller. Shear stress usually happens when two plates rub against each other as they move in opposite directions. The friction of a shear stress of the edge of the plate can cause earthquake. The last one is the confinement or confining pressure. When stress is applied, stress is applied to all sides of the crust, confining stress occurs. When this happens, the crust compacts, which make it look smaller. If the stress is too much for the crust to handle, the crust can fracture from the inside. This causes the crust weight to decrease but the crust shape remains the, sh the same. Because this type of stress can hollow out the insides of the crust, confining stress can cause sinkholes in the earth. Let us watch this video. Okay, we're fine again.
And that's all for this week. You may now answer your learning tasks in your modules. Thank you!